Number 42, letter A. Calculate the rate of heat conduction through a double pane window that has a 1.5 meter square area and is made of two panes of 0.8 centimeter thick glass separated by a one centimeter air gap. The inside surface temperature is 15 degrees Celsius while that on the outside is negative 10 degrees Celsius. And hint the two, there are identical temperature drops across the two glass panes. Okay, that might be important. All right, so here I have a little picture. We have two panes of glass, glass here, glass here. We'll pretend that this side on the left is the inside and this side on the right hand side is going to be the outside. Um, these two glass panes are separated by an air gap here in the middle. All right, and I labeled the temperatures and everything. Now, there is one thing we also do not know, okay? So when we're talking, this is all about conduction, okay? So the heat that's going to be conducted basically out of the house, right, is going to be conducted through this particular window, all right? It's going to go from hot to cold, and it's going to go through the glass. It's going to conduct through the first pane of glass. Then it's going to go through the air gap, and then it's going to conduct through the last pane of glass, all right. Now, another important hint that I'll tell you is that the rate of heat conduction is the same throughout this glass pane, this air, and this glass pane. Okay. They told us that the two temperature drops are the same of the glass panes, and that's fine. That's important. But also the rates of conduction are also constant or equal to one another. And the reason why, and you can kind of Venture a guess if they weren't, uh, not venture a guess, but venture why this is true. Um, if it weren't, if the rate of, let's say, heat transfer loss from the house was greater than that now transferred through the air here, okay, heat will then begin to build up inside the glass pane. And it will continue to build and continue to build and continue to build until boop, boop, something happens. Pop. I don't know what that was, but it's a pop. It was a pop, 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 pop. Okay, too much coffee. So anyway, we have these ideas. So let me also write down that I do not know the uh, temperature, right? On the inside part of the first glass pane, I'll call that, you know, T1. And then I don't know the temperature on the frontmost part of the second glass pane. I'll call that T2. Okay, so those are the other two temperatures that I don't know that might be important. Now, there seems like a lot of unknowns and a lot of craziness, so why don't we just start stating everything down that we just talked about? I know that basically P1, now, why am I saying P? Well, whenever they talk about rate of heat conduction, remember, we're using this formula over here on the right-hand side, and Q over T, that is power. That's energy per time. That's the definition of power. So I know that power, the, the uh, heat loss through the first pane will equal the rate of heat loss through the second, uh, through the air gap, and then that will also then equal the rate of heat loss through the third uh, part, which is the second window, uh, second uh, uh, part of the uh, window, right? The second pane. All right, so let's just keep this aside. Now, they also told us that the temperature drops are also identical. That means the temperature drop across uh, the first window pane here is going to equal the temperature drop across the second window pane. So let's be consistent. So I know basically that delta T of the first pane will equal delta T of the second pane. And why don't, well, which the second pane is really the third part of my problem, right? I kind of define this as part one, the air gap is two, and then that glass pane is three. So uh, what I realize here now is I can just expand on delta T. Now you can do T2 minus T1, that's fine. I'm going to do just final minus initial to keep it very, very rigorous here. So this will be temperature final minus the temperature initial equals then the temperature final minus the temperature initial. Now, what is the final temperature of the temperature drop across this first pane over here? Well, it would have been T1, right? We don't know what that is, so, but that's fine. Let's leave it to T1, okay? Call it T1. Minus then, what was the initial? Well, the initial was basically 15, right? We know heat's flowing from left to right, so I know the initial point is the leftmost point. So that's 15. Easy enough. Next, the final temperature, now I'm looking at the second pane, so that remember, heat's being lost to the right. So the final temperature is basically the external temperature, right? That's going to be negative 10, minus then that internal temperature there on the, on the most internal side of that second pane, and that's going to be T2. 
All right, so just write in T2. So now from here, if I like, I can, we realize we have one equation but two unknowns, so we obviously can't solve this. But I can, meaning fully, I don't know what T1 and T2 are, but I can solve it for one of the variables. So why don't we just solve it for T1, okay? So T1, I'm going to add the 15 on over to the right-hand side, so we come up with an expression of 5, it's 5 minus T2, okay? So this is the relationship between T1 and T2. All right. So now let me also, I'm just going to erase some of this work now, all right? How are you guys today? Having a better day, hopefully, than, well, I don't know, than, than the worst day of your life, I guess, because I don't know how your other day was. Um, but hopefully, hopefully you're having a good day today. All right. So now, um, basically what we need to now do is create, so we have this one equation, we have this equation, great. Um, the next step, now remember, basically I created this equation, if you, if you consider, I created this equation by talking about the two panes of glass, right? So I took into account this heat, transfer equation, the conduction, and I took into account this one. The only one I never haven't fully discussed yet is really the the uh, rate of heat transfer through the air. So why don't I just expand on that formula for right now, okay? So I can say P2, which is, remember, the air, okay? Maybe I should write a little key down here. One is the left window. Two is the, if I could spell left, right? Two is going to be uh, the air, and then three was the right, right window. Okay, so P2 now will be equal to, again, we're talking about conduction, so I'm looking at the formula over there on the right-hand side. So there's going to be K2, meaning the uh, thermal constant there for air, multiplied, that's gotten from the table, I got it right over here, multiplied by the area, the surface area of the air, okay, then multiplied by the change in temperature. Now, Consider, remember, I'm talking about moving from left to right, right? That's the way heat is flowing. So therefore, the final part of the middle section is going to be T2, okay? So I'm going to write T2 here minus then the initial part of the intersection was T1. So I'm going to write T1, okay? All down divided by, and what does this work out to be? All then divided by now uh, D2, right? Which is the thickness, basically, all right, of the air gap. They told it to us. So now, um, okay, so let's keep this formula now on the side. So I realize here that part of the problem now is this, that I realize I can do a substitution, right? If I wanted, I could basically take this result now and plug it on in for T1 here. Now, if I do that, I kind of combine these two equations. So maybe that, that might be useful, all right? So why don't we do that? So let's do P2. Whenever we're not sure of how to go about solving it, we just want to create some equations, do some substitutions, and maybe the light bulb will go off. Right? Sometimes the light bulb never goes off. Uh, so here we have T2, then minus now the T1 value of 5 minus T2, and then divided by D2. So if I were to now combine some terms here, this would be, this would now be, let me just move this up ever so slightly. This would now be P2 is going to be equal to K2, A2, uh, multiplied now by uh, basically uh, that this will, it's a double negative here when you multiply it, right? So then when you add the T's together, it becomes 2T2, right? Minus then 5 all over D2. And I'm getting to the bottom there. But now I have an equation here and I still can't solve it. Oh, goodness, right? So I still can't solve it. Why? Because I don't know T2. But now instead of having three variables I don't know, meaning the power, which is the rate of uh, conduction here, heat conduction, and the two temperatures, now I have an equation that has only two unknowns. So now I have to think about, well, okay, uh, could I have expanded, let's say, any one of these other um, power formulas? Now remember, we're saying that all these powers are equal, right? Because the rate of heat transfer has to be equal amongst all components of this. Otherwise, heat would build up or be essentially exponential, uh, not exponentially, but continually lost from some area if it were fast. It, it just wouldn't make any sense. So uh, what I'll do is now I'll expand on, let's say, one of them. It doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, I'm going to choose, though, I get, well, actually, it does kind of matter. Uh, just because, so I'm looking at this formula here, I realize I have a T2 in it. And what I'd like to do is select one of these, uh, one of these P's that will have a T2 in it. So it looks like the third 
part of the problem, meaning the second window pane I would have a T2 involved in that formula. So let's expand on that now, all right? So what I'm gonna do is basically now, I'm gonna get rid of, doesn't really matter what, I'm gonna get rid of this formula. Oops. Come on, one more time guys, one more time. There we go, look at that, okay. So get rid of this. Let's move this on up. And I don't know what just happened. Move that on up. Don't worry about the two over there. And whatever. All right, so now let's expand on P3. So we have now another equation for P3, and that's gonna be equal to K3, A3. And now again, it's the a final minus the initial. I'm gonna keep it very rigorous. So the final, ten, if I'm looking at the third pane, the final is gonna be negative 10, right? And then the initial was T2, so minus T2. And then divided by now, D3. Okay, now if you notice here, what can I do? You have now two equations, right, with basically two unknowns. But we know that this power is equal to this power. So what can I then do? I can then set these two now equal to one another. So let's see what happens when I do that. I'm going to do that on the upper left. So now let's write K2, A2, times 2T2 minus 5, all over D2 is going to be equal to now uh, K3, A3, negative 10 minus T2, all over now D3. Okay. We realize also now that the uh, areas will cancel. Okay. Why? Well, think about it. What, you know, in terms of the area that's in, in terms of the cross-sectional area through which conduction is occurring, it is this, you know, I'll highlight this box right here. That's the cross-sectional area, right? Heat is flowing perpendicularly through that cross-section. So not only is this the area of the window pane itself, basically, but it's also the area of the air, right, that is facing the window pane. And it's similarly along the whole other part of the problem. Here's the other pane, right, if I had to go, and then I don't know what that was, but, you know, you, 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 you kind of get the picture, hopefully. Uh, and if not, I would totally understand, because I'm not really sure. My hand was spasming, I think, at the moment. Uh, so now what we can do basically is we now realize that we have one equation and only one unknown. So why don't we start solving it, okay? What I suggest here is I'm going to start plugging in numbers uh, just because otherwise the algebra is going to get a little, eh, just going to get too much, too many letters all over the place. So now what's K2? Remember two we called air. So now i got to find the K of air. So that's 0 0.023. So 0 0.023 multiplied by 2T2 minus 5 all over then D2. And the D2 was the thickness of the air here, and it was one centimeter. But remember, you need that in meters, so 0.01, okay? That's now going to equal K3. So what was three? Well, we called it the right window, right? That's glass. So therefore, I need the K of glass, and that's 0 0.84, so 0 0.84. And now, that's going to be then multiplied by negative 10 minus T2, all over now D3. So that's the thickness of the glass, and that's 0 0.8 centimeters. Remember, convert that into meters, 0 0.008. And now we can go about starting to solve this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is divide these two terms together. So 0 0.023 divided by 0 0.01. Why did I need a calculator for that? Not really sure. I always realize after the fact, I just go right to the calculator, but that should have been an easy division. So this is going to be 2.3, I'm gonna write on the upper right, uh, 2t2 minus five, and then that will equal now 0 0.84, 0 0.84 divided by 0 0.008. So that's 105. So that's equal to 105, and well, that's 150. 105 times negative uh, 10 minus T2. Now divide out the 2.3 from both sides, just so I can kind of condense that a little bit. So this is going to be 2T2 minus 5 will then equal, so it's going to be 105 minus, excuse me, divided by 2.3. So that's about 45.65. So that's 45, 45.65 times a negative 10 minus T2. Let's it now expand on these terms. Let's, you know, let's expand on the right-hand side. So we got 2T2 minus five is equal to now negative, negative 456.5, multiply that by 10, and then uh, minus now, right, 45.65 T2. 
Now I think you start to see where we're gonna go. Combine this term with this term, and then combine this term here with this term here, okay? Let me include that negative over there with the blue. So basically just, I'm gonna bring the blue on over the, uh, I'm gonna bring this on over to the left, and then this on over to the right, okay? So let's do now, so it's going to be uh, the 45, basically we're adding, right? so we're adding 2 to it. So that's going to be 47.65 T2, and that's then going to equal now, I'm just going to do the subtraction here, right? Basically it's going to, we're adding 5 on over to the right hand side, so it's simply going to be the negative 451.5. And now divide out the 47.65 from both sides, and what do we get? T2 will equal, let's see, so we're going to get 451.5 divided by that answer, we have about 9.47, right? And it's negative, negative 9.47, negative 9.47. And that is in terms of degrees Celsius. Okay, so here we now have T2. We now have T2. So if I go back over to here and I highlight this right here, I know what T2 is now, right? T2 is going to be equal to negative uh, 9.47. Now that's not the answer because they want us to find now the rate of heat conduction. Now it doesn't matter which one I, ch I can do it, do this a whole bunch of ways. I mean, I probably could have done this problem a different way too. This is the way I see it. Um, what I need to now do is basically solve for my power. I don't care if it comes from P1, P2, or P3, they're all equal. All right, so I realize though that in this formula here in P3, I have an unknown T2. And that means if I can just plug in my T2 now, I can find P3. And that power is the power for everything now. So why don't we do that? Okay. Let's simply erase all this. Actually, hopefully I don't need it again. Well, yeah, no, I think we're fine. All right. So let's just bring this on up. I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to plug everything in. So P3 then is equal to K3, remember that was the glass, so that's going to be 0.84. The area was 1.5, and now the minus 10 minus then a negative 9.47. Just be careful with all of your parentheses and whatnot. Divided them by D3, so the thickness 0 0.008, remember you need that in meters. So P3 will now be equal to so 0 0.84 times then 1.5 times then, uh, that's essentially negative 10 plus... 9.47, and then divide by 0 0.008. What do you get? Negative 83, right? 0.5 or so, I guess two sig figs, it doesn't really matter. Negative 83, and that's watts now, okay? Watts, or you could have done joules per second, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. But the negative sign should make sense because the heat is being lost right through that pain, all right? So that should hopefully make sense. but. That would be the answer, whether you need it in terms of, I mean, if they want to just calculate the rate of heat conduction, you can just give the absolute value here. You know, so if you wanted to say that the rate is simply 83 watts, that's fine. Okay, the sign just means that it's it's being lost, whatever. Um, it, it really doesn't even matter. Uh, sure. All right, so that's the answer for letter A. And now letter B. Oh, God. Calculate the rate of heat conduction through a 1.6 centimeter thick window of the same area with the same temperatures. So basically, we're not going to do this whole thing again. All right, that's that's basically what, what I'm going to. Well, that's basically what I'm saying. We're not doing this again. Uh, but what we probably could do is we probably could just make an adjustment, right, in terms of my equation over here. The only th difference now is that the thickness here will change. Okay, so if you remember, if you recall. This was represented the thickness, the D3, right? D3 here was the thickness of the window pane. So basically all you got to do, and I'll let you do this part, all right? But basically all you got to do, get rid of get rid of this value here and then turn it into now 0 0.016, okay? And do literally the math the same way I did it. And then you'll come up with your answer, okay? And then you'll get the, the rate of heat conduction, and then you can compare it, meaning do a division. You know, whatever you want to do. But that should be good. I mean, it's, it's just follow the same steps, guys. All right? The, literally same algebraic steps. So hopefully that helps. All right? Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much. And we see you next time. Take care.